Kids Learning Club. The Elephant and His Friends. The Elephant and His Friends. Dembo the Elephant woke up one morning and took a tour in the forest looking for friends. He ran into a monkey and asked him, Can we be friends, monkey? You're too big, and you can't swing on trees like me, so I can't be your friend, said the monkey. Then he left. Dembo carried on until he came upon a rabbit and asked him if he could be his friend. You're too big to enter my burrow. You can't be my friend, said the rabbit. So Dembo carried on looking for a friend. Then he met a frog and asked him if he could be his friend. You're too big and heavy and you can't jump like me. I'm sorry, you can't be my friend said the frog. Then Dembo met a snake and asked him to be his friend, and he received the same answer, that he's too big and cannot be a snake's friend. The next day, all the animals in the forest were running in fear. Dembo stopped a bear and asked him what was happening. The bear said that a tiger was attacking every animal in sight. Dembo wanted to save the weak animals, so he went to the tiger and said, Please, sir, leave my friends alone. Don't eat them. The tiger didn't listen to Dembo and told him to mind his own business. So the elephant kicked the tiger and frightened him. The tiger ran away. Dembo then returned to the other animals and told them what had happened. When they heard how the elephant had saved their lives, they all said in harmony, Your size is just right to become our friend. The animals realized that a friend is not measured by his shape, size, or color, but by loyalty and love. The Cat and the Bell And the Bell at a grocery store in the city lived a large family of mice. It was a perfect place for them to live, for there was plenty of food for all the family members. They had big appetites for all kinds of delicious food. They ate everything, spoiled bags of grain, bread, biscuits, and fruits in the grocery store where they lived. When the grocer saw how the mice had destroyed the goods and bags of food, he was worried about his store and goods, for the mice wasted much of it. So he thought, I should buy a cat and let it stay in the store to scare the mice. They will escape to somewhere else, and that way I will be rid of them. And so the grocer bought a big cat and left him in the store at night, which was when the mice came out to eat. The cat had fun chasing and catching the mice. They weren't able to move freely now because they were afraid of the cat that guarded the grocery store at night. The mice held an emergency meeting. We must get rid of the cat. Can someone give a suggestion? One said. All the mice sat and brooded until a smart-looking mouse stood up and said, The cat moves softly to sneak up and chase us. That is the problem. If we can tie a bell around his neck, we will be able to know his movements and where he is. Yes, that is the answer, said the other mice. An old mouse stood up slowly and asked, who would tie the bell around the cat's neck? All the mice remained silent in fear, and no one answered. So the old mouse suggested they leave the store and search for another place to live in peace, far from the cat. They all agreed. That's how the grocer's idea worked, and peace returned to the store.
the miser and the gold. And the gold. Uncle Melvin lived alone in a big house with a large garden. He was a miser who owned a lot of gold coins and never spent any of them. He kept them in a hole in the garden covered with some stones. Every day before he went to sleep, he would go to the hole where he hid his coins and counted the stones covering them to make sure the gold was secure in the hole. He repeated this every day and never spent any of the hidden gold. One day, a thief found out about the miser, so he watched him until he learned the gold's location. The thief waited for the miser to return home, and at nightfall, he went to the secret hole and took the gold and ran away. The next day, Melvin the miser found the stones on the hole scattered and the gold missing. He screamed out loud, oh. His neighbor heard his screaming and asked, What happened? When the neighbor found out what had happened, he asked, Why didn't you save the money inside your house? It would have been easier to reach the money when you needed to buy something. Buy something, said Melvin. I never used the gold to buy anything. I would never spend it. When the neighbor heard Melvin, he threw a stone in the hole and said, If that is the case, keep this stone instead of the gold. It's as useless as the gold you lost. Uncle Melvin learned that by being stingy, you're only saving money for others to spend. The Baby Camel and His Mother Baby Camel and His Mother one morning, Asil woke up and reflected on the other animals and found that he looked totally different. So he went and asked his mother, Mommy, why do we have a hump? Our humps are for storing water so we can live in the desert, replied his mother. Okay, and why do we have rounded feet, Mommy? said Asil. The mother replied, because they help us walk comfortably in the desert. These legs also help us move around in the sand. Okay, but why are our eyelashes long? asked Seal. To protect our eyes from the desert dust and sand, replied his mother. The baby camel thought for a while and said, So we have a hump to store water for desert journeys rounded hooves to keep us comfortable when we walk in the desert sand, and long eyelashes to protect us from sand and dust during a desert storm. Then what are we doing in this zoo? The mother was stunned and was unable to answer her child's question. Your strengths, skills, and knowledge are useless if you aren't in the right place. The Lion and the Smart Rabbit Lion and the Smart Rabbit Once upon a time, a lion was bored of hunting and chasing animals to catch his prey when hungry. So he called all the animals and issued an order. Every day, one of you must come to be my prey. All the animals were afraid, so they held a meeting and decided the rabbit should go first because he was the smallest and weakest among them. The rabbit was terrified. On his way to the lion's den, he came across an old well. He looked into the well, which was deep and dangerous. The rabbit made a sound and it echoed back, so he had an idea to save himself from the lion. The lion was angry because none of the animals had come yet. The rabbit approached slowly and scared. The lion roared and said, Why are you late? On my way here, your majesty, another lion chased me. I barely ran away from him, so I can sacrifice my life to you, my king, replied the terrified rabbit. 
The lion was pleased with the rabbit, but the thought of another lion in the forest made him angry. The lion roared, Do you know where that lion lives? Yes, your majesty. Please come with me, replied the rabbit. The rabbit took the lion to the old well and said, Your Majesty, that lion lives in this well. The lion looked inside the well and roared loudly. He heard another roar, which was his own echo, but he didn't realize it and thought it was the other lion's roar. He jumped into the well, and that was the end of the lion. The rabbit was able to save his own life, and all the animals were happy also to be safe. The animals learned that anyone who is unfair can be awfully strong, but one must use the strength of one's mind, as it is undefeatable. The Hat Seller and the Monkeys Seller and the Monkeys There was a hat seller in the city who went to the market every day to sell hats, and he returned home with what was left to sell them the next day. One day after he sold some hats, he passed by a forest on his way home. The weather was hot, and he was exhausted. He decided to sit under a big tree to rest in the shade for a while, and quickly fell asleep. The Foolish Donkey Donkey. William, the salesman, used to go to the market every day to sell the salt he carried on his donkey's back. On their way, they had to cross a small bridge to reach the market. The donkey was lazy, stubborn, always tired, and never wanted to carry anything. One day, the donkey suddenly fell off the bridge into the river, and the salt dissolved in the water, making the bag very light to carry. The donkey came out of the river happy for not having to carry anything, while the salesman returned home sad. The next day, while they were crossing the bridge, the donkey jumped into the river again. He decided to repeat this trick every day. The salt salesman realized the donkey's trick each time they crossed the bridge and decided to teach him a lesson. The next day, the salesman put a bag of cotton on the donkey's back, then headed to the market, then waited for him to play his trick when they crossed the bridge. When the donkey did his trick and jumped into the water on purpose, the cotton absorbed the water and the weight on his back increased. The donkey struggled to get out of the river and get to the market with the wet cotton. The donkey learned his lesson and never played the trick again. And the salesman was very happy that his idea had worked. The Wolf and the Lamb Wolf and the Lamb In a green valley, the sun was shining, the grass was plentiful, and the flock was feeding and enjoying both nature and the delicious grass. There was one small sheep who loved to eat a lot. Over time, he wandered here and there looking for fresh, delicious grass and was unaware that he had strayed far from his flock. The hungry wolf was closely following him, waiting for the shepherd to lose sight of him. When the little sheep realized he was lost and far away from the flock, he decided to go back and join them again. Meanwhile, the wolf suddenly came out of hiding. The sheep was terrified certain that he wouldn't get away from the wolf, so he thought of a trick that might work. He asked the wolf, Are you going to eat me? Yes, I am, said the wolf. Can you wait for a while? I've eaten a lot of grass, and my tummy is full of grass. 
If you eat me now, you'll feel as if you're eating grass. So you better wait until it's digested, said the lamb. The wolf thought for a moment and then said, Fine, I'll wait. I've been watching you for a while, and I can wait some more. Yes, the lamb's trick worked. But now what? Time passed quickly, and the wolf was getting ready again to kill the lamb. But the lamb stopped him again, saying, Dear wolf, please wait some more. The grass hasn't been digested yet. If you eat me now, you will find a lot of grass in my tummy. Let me dance. That will make it digest easier. The wolf was annoyed, but agreed to wait a bit longer so he could eat delicious meat, free of the taste of grass. The little lamb madly danced for a while. Then he suddenly stopped. Why have you stopped? asked the wolf. I can't dance without any music. Do you see this bell around my neck? Can you untie it and shake it hard so I can dance quickly to digest the grass in my tummy? asked the lamb. The wolf was ready to do anything to eat the lamb, so he untied the bell on the lamb's neck and shook it as hard as he could. Meanwhile, the shepherd was looking for the little lamb and heard the bell ringing. He saw the wolf and the lamb, so he ran toward the wolf with his stick. When the wolf saw the shepherd, he ran away. The little lamb was saved by his own cleverness. The little lamb learned from this situation that even someone weak can win over the mighty using tricks and common sense.